Well, they finally did it. Technology is finally caught up with the last bastion of human ingenuity. Some schmuck named, forget the name, you can find it easy enough on the infowebs. It says that this clown won first place at the Colorado State Fair with, get this, an AI generated monstrosity called Quatre d'Opera Special, which is French for nonsense created by a douchebag for gullible dupes. It rolls off the tongue so much sweeter in French than it does in English. AI Artificial Intelligence generated art. Sweet Lord Jesus. That's it. I need a drink. Good evening, people. Real people thoughts and hopes and dreams and disappointments all wrapped up in sacks of meat of varying appearances welcome to before the mass the show where i <laughs> we drink away all the absolute horse pucky that the world has to throw at us although it seems to be getting increasingly harder either the booze is losing its effect or Bullshit's just getting more irritating. So saddle up to the bar. Tonight we're drinking zombies. To the Laka Laka Lounge to lose life's lousiness in liquor. Hello. As promised, tonight is the zombie. I'm not going to pretend to say it's one of my favorites, although I do enjoy a good zombie. But this is not a drink that you drink on a nightly basis. This is not a drink that you drink on a weekly basis. In fact, this probably isn't a drink that you should drink on a monthly basis. Okay, maybe monthly is okay. Maybe weekly is okay. Who knows? You know, do what you do. Do you. Just don't get behind the wheel of a car after this. In fact, here are things that you should never do after having drank a zombie. Drive. That's out of the question. No driving after a zombie. Not even after one. No. If you're going to drink a zombie, you might as well just hand your keys over. Two. Don't make social media posts. You'll forget about it. And then a week later, you'll find out that you did something stupid and you'll regret it. And it'll be too late because it's been a week. No social media posts. Three. Don't call any ex-girlfriends, ex-boyfriends, ex-husbands, ex-wives. No calling exes. It can only go poorly. You're either going to call them begging to come back or more likely you'll call them to tell them what for don't do it just here's a here's an idea right after you watch this video if you in fact drink that zombie turn your phone off discretion is the better part of valor (laughs) now that we have that out of the way The zombie was created sometime in the 1930s by tiki legend Don the Beachcomber. The story goes that some guy waltzed into his bar 
and asked him for a hangover cure because he had overindulged the night before and he had a business meeting to attend today. So Don the Beachcomber, like an old salt, decided hair of the dog was the trick. And he made this concoction with like four different rums. And yeah, it, it's, it's quite a potent cocktail. And Don was very secretive about his recipes. So just to make sure that nobody could really get the recipe for the zombie, he'd keep changing it every couple months. So there are like five or six different recipes out there for the zombie. I hope you're ready for this. I really do. Let's get zombified. The recipe I'm using tonight, I'm pulling out of the Ultimate Bar Book. Mainly because I have all the ingredients in this recipe. Like I mentioned, Don the Beachcomber had so many recipes for this drink because he kept changing it that there's, there's a plethora of them out there. But what all of them all of them have in common is this oh and this lime juice orange juice pineapple juice that is the mix so what we're using overproof rum I've got Ray and Nephew. Gold rum. I got this Gigantor Mount Gay on sale. Big find. Light rum. Getting rough there. Dark rum, my favorite. Apricot brandy or apricot liqueur. Cream de banana, pineapple juice, freshly squeezed orange juice, freshly squeezed lime juice, demerara syrup. Oh boy. One ounce of dark. An ounce of light. One ounce of gold. One ounce of cream de banana. Just, just banana liqueur. That's all that is. Half an ounce of apricot. Now the banana liqueur is easy to find. You can usually find it at Bevmo or Total Total Wine and More, whatever that store is called. We don't have one up here. But if you cannot find apricot liqueur or apricot brandy, go ahead and use apricot nectar. It'd just be a little less alcoholic, but not enough for you to even notice. One ounce of pineapple. One ounce of orange. One ounce of lime. It's pretty easy, everything's one ounce. I mean, as far as the juices and the alcohols go. Once you get to the Demerara syrup. Now, instead of Demerara syrup, if you don't have it, you can use a tablespoon of brown sugar. But I like Demerara syrup. It's yummy, and I'm going to use three quarters of an ounce. Quarter ounce of grenadine. You know what to do. That's my zombie impression.
Right about now, you're probably wondering, but boats, what about the 151? Well, don't worry, we're getting there. Take your spent lime shell. Just go ahead and lay that on top. 151, overproof rum. Now, if you don't want to drink this, you can go ahead and run your car with it. Orange slice. You can freeze these and that way you have them for later. There we go. I knew it would work. And there it is. Isn't that dramatic? Cheers. Always make sure to blow it out before you put it to your face, people. Uh, disclaimer, I will not be held responsible for burnt mustaches and facial hair. God bless America, that is good. But see, that's the scary part about a zombie. Is it is so good. It's just so good. It's like a Long Island iced tea, only it tastes good. It just goes down like sh nothing. Now, after letting that uh, that overproof rum burn for a while, you can you can dump it in, stir it up, give it a little extra. <clears throat> It is, it is still good. I'm pleased with myself on this one. Cheers, people. Remember, no driving. AI generated artwork. Needless to say, many artists are not pleased. Yours truly included. The moment you take humanity out of art, can it even possibly be considered art? There's no real emotion. You tell it, I want a picture of Zuckerberg dressed as an 18th century lord. It arranges some digital pixels and you get this. So this, uh, this douche canoe, who no doubt believes he's doing the Lord's work in the realm of technology, goes to his little computer and tells it, Oh, computer, please paint me something pretty. And the computer says, anything for you, you little bastard. And then it shits this out of the printer. The hardest thing this guy did was probably haul it somewhere where someone else would frame it for him. Artists. Now that's artists, not art world. And I want to make that distinction known because I'll get around to the art world. Those bastards. We're not pleased that this one first place. Rightfully. Here you have a group of people. People. Who worked. 
went to school, some self-taught, all honed their skills, just so whatever overpaid gutter trash occupier of the social high ground that was the juror could be like, Oh my! Robot art! So avant-garde! Nitwits. Well, the artist, author, watcher, minder, I don't even know what to call him, the, the evil asshole that gave rise to this unholy abomination. Well, he's unrepentant. He said he knew it would be controversial. Which is another way of saying that he knew he was going to piss people off and cause a lot of emotional upheaval. Amongst actual artists, anyway. And eh, who gives a shit? Because progress, am I right? <laughs> He threw the emotional upheaval right back at the artist community by saying, and I quote, How interesting it is to see how all these people on Twitter who are against AI generated art are the first ones to throw the human under the bus by discrediting the human element. Does this seem hypocritical to you guys? Basically, he's saying in a single breath that this was AI created, but that the human had to tell the AI what and how and when, which gives us a paradox. Did the human conceive of this? If so, it's not AI created. The computer can no more be considered the artist than any any of Kuntz's art sweatshop workers can be considered the artists of Kuntz's work. By the way, Coons laid off a bunch of his, uh, people a few years ago. Had them replaced by robots. But the reason that hasn't become such earth-shattering news is because, well, Coons doesn't give the robots credit for the art. the AI did come up with it, then was the human element even necessary in this tour de farce? He thinks that the artists criticizing it are hypocritical or discrediting the human element. I don't think we're discrediting the human element. Pandora's box doesn't open itself. It takes some asshole with no shits to give about whose livelihoods gets burned. There's your human element. He takes exception to the notion that he misrepresented this, this thing, by saying, quote, his name redacted via mid-journey. Because that's not vague or cryptic. Not at all. So, what happens when AI takes over everything, including the world of art and culture? Is our culture no longer human? He questions. But I'm sure the art world, God bless him, yeah, the art world, 
will welcome this with open arms. In fact, the guy who opened the box is banking on it. He sees a dystopian science fiction hellscape where AI art is mainstream. I mean, because why pay a human hundreds of dollars for a one-of-a-kind artwork invested in emotion and skill and labor? And you can pay an over-techno-educated huckster just a little less to get some ones and zeros arranged in an aesthetically pleasing fashion. You know what I think? I think Terminator got it wrong. Machines don't rise up by taking over the military. That's, that's expected. They rise up by taking over everything that it is to be human. Lulling us into a sense of blissful unawareness. Until finally humanity goes out not with a bang, but with a fizzle. Because we're too stupid to stand up for ourselves. Maybe Walter Gropius was right. Maybe he was right when he said that art lives in grotesque morgues called museums because art is dead in civilized nations. It's profound. Even more profound now that this schmuck, whatever. That's how it's done, son. So do you, creator of the AI creator. In your ear, mister. Next week, I'll be doing another iteration of Friends of the Mass, introducing you to the Barstool Bosun, not tire and fancy worker of unimpeachable quality. So make sure you tune in for that. Until next week, go out, do things with your imagination and your hands. You have a nasty mind. You know who you are. Cheers. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Drunken sailor? Her light in the morning. Way day up she rises. Way day up she rises. Way day up she rises. Her light in the morning. Put him in the long boat until he I felt that in my soul. Maybe I'm allergic to grenadine. Give it a little extra. <coughs> I'm going to need another drink for this. Just for the toast. Yeah. God, this is good. Bet you I could drink these all night. <laughs> when did I get three cameras? Cool. That was unexpected. Wow. Put one letter in wrong. <laughs> All sorts of madness pops up.
I cannot believe after three weeks this fly is still alive. There's just one fly in here, people. One. One fly. It's not two flies. It's not three flies. There isn't a fly back there. <coughs> There's no fly over there. There's no fly over there. It's just this one stupid, stinking fly. <laughs> I mean... How long is a fly's lifespan, man? Do they ever die? Because this one won't. I swear to God, I've hit it twice, and it just keeps going. It's like the fucking Energizer bunny of flies. It will not stop. It's the Terminator of flies. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse. Or fear, and it absolutely will not stop until I am so pissed off that I start shooting at it. Don't worry, I'm not going to shoot at it. I'm, I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. This is the third time I've had to do this. Each time I've gone through two of these motherfuckers. And, well, that's a lot. 